there really only one way to get to heaven? There are so many religions that were started by one person and they kind of branched off and did their own thing. For example, Mormonism was started by one person, Joseph Smith, and he said that an angel visited him and out of those visitations is how Mormonism was birthed. But, and I would be told by my Mormon friends this, that they would say, you know, as long as we try to keep the Ten Commandments, that's all we're supposed to do here on earth. I'll speak to that a little bit later, but listen to what the Bible says in Galatians chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. It says, but even we, if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the to the one we have preached to you, let him be accursed. And then we know the, the uh, Islam was created also out of one person, Muhammad, said an angel visited him as well. One person's experience created this whole religion. And Buddhism was said to have been uh, started by a person named Siddhartha Gautama. I might be saying that wrong, but this person was also um, enlightened while kind of sitting under a tree and just, you know, meditating, contemplating, and, and apparently reaching a some sort of enlightenment stage. Um, but again, and then they called him Buddha. So, and there are so many other religions that talk about what to, how to get to heaven, and some don't even talk about getting to heaven, but they're all built from a certain person's point of view, their opinion. But let me remind you this, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 7 reminds us that in that those passages, Paul is indicating that there were 15, uh, sorry, 500 eyewitnesses that saw Jesus after he was resurrected from the dead. Not only that, there's no evidence of his remains, no skeletal, no remains, no, no body, nothing. You can look in every historical book. You can look in every archive. You can talk with scientists and philosophers and astrologists and all these, whoever you want to try to get the information from. There is no remains of Jesus' body. Why? Because Mark 16, 19 tells us Jesus ascended up to heaven and he sat down at the right hand of God. So when he died on the cross. When it was when it was done, when he had done what the Father told him to do, he ascended up into heaven to sit by the Father at his right hand. This is why there are no remains. This is why there is no body. There's no record of, of him. But the scriptures tell us that there were witnesses that saw him after he was resurrected how many of these other religions can say that none and i also want to point out one more thing that these are just a few of the religions i'm going to have time to talk to to you about in this video but there are so many others all of these religions have one thing in common that is completely differentiated from christianity Every single one of these religions is all about man trying to do works to get something good. It's, it, it is, it's not like Christianity is all about Jesus came to us. Romans 5.18 says that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Do you see the stark contrast? If we're supposed to do works that make us good and just don't just keep the 10 commandments and just do all these penance and just be a good person. And maybe when you're reincarnated, you know, you'll have an opportunity to get to heaven or all these things. It's all about doing, 
but Jesus Christ and Christianity is about done. If Romans 5, 8, 8 is true, and it is, Jesus came to us while we were still sinners, Christ died. While we were still sinners, Christ died. While we were strung out on drugs, Christ died for us. While you were addicted, Christ died for you. While you were confused and sleeping around, Christ died for you. There was no works that had to be done. So it literally abolishes all of this. Christianity takes God coming down to be with his creation. All these other religions are about how we can do works and how we can, you know, how it's all about the person. And then the last point I want to uh, say about Christianity is it's the only religion where the tomb is still empty. The tomb is empty. Every other religion, their leaders died. And we have evidence of their remains. They have no truth in how to get to heaven. John 14 reminds us, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. This is Christianity. This is the pathway to heaven is only through Jesus Christ. And I want to challenge you right now about the gospel because so many people are teaching things that are not the gospel. You've got the word of faith. You've got the prosperity gospel. You've got the gospel of grace. You've got the gospel of, of peace and like all, all these weird stuff, new age and word, um, new thought. All of these things that are not biblical. Do not be deceived, my friends. Jesus Christ will not be mocked. God will not be mocked. His word is true. He is the truth, the life, and the way. And here's the gospel. I'm going to share it with you right now as briefly as I can. Here's the gospel. The truth is that we were born into this world with a sinful nature due to the fall of mankind. And because we are born into sin, the Bible tells us in Romans 6 and 23, I think it is, that the wages of our sin is death. Death meaning eternal separation from God in the lake of fire. That is the, punish, the punishment and the payment that has to be made for our sins. And some people would say, well, I'm not a, I'm a good person. I don't sin that much. Have you ever lied? Everyone has lied. Have you ever committed adultery? You may say, well, no. The Bible says if a man even lusts after another woman with his, in his, within his heart, he has committed adultery. Have you ever stolen anything from anyone? Even a little piece of candy or piece of gum, whatever it is. Here's the gospel. We cannot keep the Ten Commandments. It doesn't mean we go out and try to break them, but we cannot possibly keep the Ten Commandments because we are a fallen man. We are Mankind is fallen. We are sinful. We have to have a Savior. If we did not have Jesus Christ, our punishment for the wages of our sin is death, eternal damnation in the lake of fire. But the good news of the gospel is this, that because Jesus Christ came, he died, he shed his blood on the cross for you and for me. He is the payment. He is, it's like going to the judge and they, they put you in front of the courts and they, they try you and someone shows up and he says, you know what, I'm going to bail them out. I'm going to pay their fine. Because Jesus paid your fine, because there's no way you could save yourself. You're still a liar, a cheater, an adulterer, and all these other things that we, we are because we're a sinful creation. See, sometimes people think that when you come to Christ, you're all of a sudden this perfect little person. No. The Bible says if we say that we do not sin, we deceive ourselves. We are not sinless. This is why we need a savior. That, my friend, is the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you had Jesus Christ and you believe in him, you accept him into your heart, your life will change. 
if there's no repentance, if there's no life transformation, you really need to question if you're truly saved. I want to give you an opportunity today to know Jesus, to believe that he is the only way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father, which means heaven. Unless you go through him, there is only one way. And there's no formulaic way, but I'm just going to guide you in a prayer. If you don't know what to say, you just say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I've made a wreck of my life. I don't want to live this way anymore. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior and show me how to live a life that you want me to live. Be the Lord of my life. And he'll come in. And I can tell you from my own experience as a saved person, I couldn't tell you what happened, but I know the day after I received Jesus Christ into my heart, I, I felt changed. The Bible says he makes you a new creation. You will know. So many Christians think they're saved and they're not saved. Your saved life, if you received Christ this day or last year or 1982, if your life is not transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ, if there's not an ongoing repentance and an ongoing sanctification, meaning he's making you, you know, uh, pure, he's purifying you, asking you give up this, stop going here, stop saying that, all these things that make you more holy, then you really need to question, am I saved? Because you don't know what tomorrow holds. You don't know if you're going to have time to change your mind. You don't know what tomorrow holds. So be assured today by inviting Christ into your life. And if you did that, let me know so I can pray for you. I want to pray for you. And I want to say thank you to all of you who always watch these videos and share these videos. Share the video. Share this video. Let people know about the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not just Randy telling the gospel. The Bible commands us. It says that if we do not go out and share the gospel of Jesus Christ with the world, we are living in sin. I don't know about you, but I don't like to have sin. I don't like to live a sinful life if I, if I know how not to. And we know because the Bible tells us to go into all the world sharing the gospel of the good news of Jesus Christ and making disciples. So thank you, thank you. Share this video and come and follow me on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, MeWe. I'm now on TikTok and I'll see you guys next time.